So this is all about um, null hypothesis really, which is, is a bit of a tricky idea to get your head around. It only really comes up when you talk about chi-squared. Um, and th there's a, a basic way to look at it, which, which I'll mention, the kind of quick and easy way to understand what's happening. But I want to just talk about it to, to make sense of it, because it is quite an important idea in science. Um, now, let's say I, I decided to test something, um, let's say I'd, I'd come up with a new medicine, and my medicine, um, I claim a tablet that makes you stronger, okay? And I wanted to show that this, this medicine would make a group of people stronger. So obviously I'd need a, a large sample of people to try it on, so I get my uh, people, and I give them the medicine, um, and I want to see if they get stronger, let's say in a month's time. Now, the problem with doing any kind of experiment like this, and most experiments actually, um, I can't be 100% sure. If I've got to the end of the experiment, and I don't know, I'd tested it on uh, five people, and two of them had got stronger, let's just say. The ones I've shown in green. Now, can I definitely 100% be sure that it was my medicine, my tablets, that made these people stronger? Maybe it is, but possibly they were just going to get stronger anyway. It could have just been a random effect... Um, and I've got no way of knowing. The problem is, I can't for 100% certain say that my medicine, my tablets, were what was responsible. All I can look at is um, the, the kind of probabilities of it. Now, because I can't be certain about this, um, it, it's very difficult or impossible, really, for me to say that, that it's worked. But what I can do is, rather than showing something trying to prove that something has worked. Instead, what I can do is test something called the null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis is almost the opposite idea. So if I gave my, my sample of people the tablets and nothing happened, that's really the null hypothesis, that nothing is going to happen, okay? The one I want to prove, or the one I sorry, want to show, uh, is sometimes called an alternative hypothesis, although this isn't mentioned in your books. Don't worry, let's see where I'm going with this. Now, what I want to try and do, my alternative hypothesis, of course, is that my medicine makes people stronger. But I can't prove that, I can't show that. All I can do is say that this is more likely to be happening than the null hypothesis. So I can perform a series of statistical tests, and it will basically give me a number. Now, what I want is this number to be as high as possible. So the higher the number, that I get, um, the more likely that I can reject the null hypothesis is the straightforward idea. So um, if I did this test on rather than five people, hundreds and thousands of people, and I got a value that was quite high, I could say, well, I reject the null hypothesis, which means this is more and more likely to be true. I never actually proved this, I just said that's more likely. Now, that, that's the idea behind this kind of statistical test, the null hypothesis. Now, how does it relate to what you're doing? Well, as I said, the, the place you'll come across this is in the chi-squared test. So when you get this, when you work your way through this chi-squared test and you come up with a number, um, what that number represents is a statistical probability, your ability to reject the null hypothesis. And the quick and easy way to look at it is to think that if it's a big number, you can reject the null hypothesis. If it's a small number, then you say, um, if it's a small number, let's put this in, a small number, then you accept the null hypothesis. Okay? Now, the problem becomes is with what do you mean by high and what do you mean by low, or what do you mean by big and small? Big and small or high and low, shouldn't say. Um, now, this is where, and I'll just throw the book in for a second. Um, this is on page... Um, page numbers on this one, 135, if you want to look at it. Here is a table of um, numbers. Now, you, you ignore the colours for a moment. If you look at these um, numbers as they go along, basically the numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger. So the, f the higher the number, the more likely we can reject the whole null hypothesis. Now, the question becomes, how big is big or how high a number? And what we would usually do in science is, um, not all science, but but we would look at a number that gives us a greater than 5% chance, okay? So any number that is bigger 
than um, anything in this 5% column, 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. Now remember this, this idea down here of degrees of freedom. Um, usually you'd be coming across in a chi-squared test, very often there are four categories, four different things it can be. Um, degrees of freedom is four minus one, three. If you're wondering why this minus one comes from, it's it's a common thing in statistics. It's when you are sampling um, a, pop, a part of a population rather than the whole thing. It represents the fact that you've not sampled everybody. Um, so usually it'd be that one. Not always. Sometimes you might get a, a genetic cross to do where there are only um, two different classes, for example. So you might have to choose a different number. You'd always be given these tables, by the way. You wouldn't have to remember these. But let's just try and put that into perspective um, from a chi-squared test. Let's say I did a chi-squared test, uh, a normal kind of dihybrid cross, and I got a value that was, um, let's say, 1.3. That was the number I came up with, okay? Now, in a chi-squared test, in, in, in a kind of, let's, let's put some alleles in here. Let's say I was doing that cross, like that. Um, I would expect from that to get a ratio of the, the classic 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. What this number tells me is, um, whatever numbers I actually get, are they close enough to that to say that, yeah, it's, it's probably just exactly what I'd expect? Um, the problem, I suppose, is trying to put this in terms of null hypothesis. The null hypothesis would be that these alleles are completely unconnected to each other. They will be inherited pretty much randomly, which will give us that combination. Okay. The alternative hypothesis in this case would be that there is something else going on with these alleles, that they're not just randomly um, a sort of, or, or randomly inherited. Now, what might that mean is if you get a value, let's say instead of 9331, I got a completely different ratio. I don't know, I'll just make something up for a second. I got that, for example. What that's telling me is my ratios aren't the 9331. Something else is going on. Now, I don't, I don't necessarily know what that something else is. My alternative hypothesis could be anything. Maybe the sex linkage maybe inheriting a certain combination of these alleles is fatal to the organism for some reason. Maybe one of these makes the organism your know, bright pink and so it's easy to spot and predators get it. For whatever reason. All I'm trying to do here is say, can I take the null hypothesis that there's nothing else going on, this is just a normal dihybrid cross, or are the numbers, the ratio I get, so different that something else is happening? So in practical terms, a small value is... I accept the null hypothesis. Remember, the null hypothesis in this case is that um, there's nothing else happening, nothing else going on. It's a small number. In fact, as it turns out, it's below oops, It's below my value on here of 7.82. I can accept the null hypothesis. Yes, that's happening. If, on the other hand, I got a value that was, um, I know, 17.2, that's quite a high value. It's higher than my 5%, much higher. Okay, that's my five percent value comes out seven point eight two. Basically, the higher it is, I would I would reject the null hypothesis. Big number, reject the null hypothesis. In other words, something else is happening. I don't have to know what the something else is. All that number is telling me is that something else is happening. So, out of all that, um, the only bit you need to uh, really remember is big number something else is going on. We don't know what that is yet. We could make suggestions. Normally, that they're going to give you something which would either give you a very big number or a very small number. They're not going to give you something very, very close. Um, if you did get a value that's very close, um, you know, it might tell you that you might want to repeat the experiment or do it with a bigger sample. Um, it's a contentious kind of area, but that's what you're looking for. Big numbers, something else is going on. Small numbers, it's just normal dihybrid cross if you like, nothing else special is happening.